Hey guys, it's Sam with Celebrity Workout Routines. Welcome to the video. In today's video, we'll be discussing the diet principles surrounding Jamie Foxx's diet plan and discussing how you can follow a similar diet and get the similar results. All right, before we get into that though, just want to give you guys a quick note. If you do enjoy the video, really appreciate it if you could give the video a like or subscribe to my channel. Just gives me some great feedback on what type of videos to make in the future. All right, guys, let's get started then. All right, so for this type of physique, we're going to have a diet plan that consists of two phases, all right? And phase one is essentially called the bulking phase, where your primary goal is to build muscle. And then we have a phase two called the cutting phase, where the primary goal is to lose fat. And we do this for a few different reasons. And you know, the main reason is the simple fact that you can't build muscle and lose fat at the same time. You know, your body needs to needs or requires certain you know types of foods and caloric goals during each phase that it's nearly impossible. You know, it's the same as, you know, building muscle requires a higher level of calories, higher level of protein, higher level of carbs. Where on the inverse side, losing fat requires high protein to maintain that muscle mass but you need to drop the calories. So, you know, being able to target between muscle and fat and going back and forth is what's going to give us this type of cyclical workout scheme. And you might need to go through a few of these rotations before you get to your ideal physique. But the main thing to take away here is the fact that we do need to split this into two phases and we shouldn't have those goals overlapping. You know, if you're focused on building muscle, don't really worry about, you know, gaining any fat at that point. Like, it's going to happen. Like when you're building muscle, you will gain fat as well. And when you're losing fat, you will lose some muscle as well. So, you know, as long as we think of this as two phases, you know, another great reason why this helps is makes just makes, you know, your caloric requirements every day and setting that day diet plan. It makes that more easily defined. It makes it easier to follow. So we really need to, at this point, we really need to focus on which phase do you want to be in based on how you look and how you perceive you look and how long you want to stay in each phase. So that's up to everyone. Usually I recommend a one-to-one -one ratio. So, you know, if you do one month of building muscle or you're in phase one, then try to follow that up with another month of phase two. There's others that try to go three months with phase one and then three months with phase two, or they just find that their body puts on muscle a lot easier than it loses fat. So they make their ratio you know, skewed into the cutting phase. So they'll do one month of building muscle and then two months of losing fat. You know, that's kind of a personal thing depending on your actual body and your requirements and what you want to look like. So remember that this isn't set in stone. This is just more of a high level approach that you can kind of customize based on your own particular uh, needs. All right. And the third reason why this is a really good way of approaching it is it just really helps us retain our muscle mass. You know, when you are in that cutting phase, you don't want to lose muscle. It, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of time and a lot of time pumping iron in the gym to build that muscle. So once you put on a pound of muscle, you want to do everything you can to kind of retain that. All right. So let's get into phase one here. Phase one, as I said before, is the bulking phase. And in the bulking phase, you're going to eat above your maintenance requirements. And essentially your maintenance requirements is the number of calories you burn throughout the day and then add on the calories that you burn through exercise and you want to eat above that. That gives your body a surplus of nutrients to build muscle. All right. And the way we're really going to do this is we're going to have a high protein and high carb diet. You know, hitting the gym hard at this point, it's going to require a lot of energy. So you're going to need the carbs and you're also tearing your muscle fibers as you lift weights. So we do want to provide the body with a high level of protein to help repair the muscle and make it uh, come back stronger. All right. So some example foods just real quick. And we're going to break it down into three categories, protein, carbs, and fats. And for protein, pretty much any lean meat, you know, egg whites is a great cheap option. It's probably, you know, you having a couple egg whites every morning for breakfast is a great way to get in like an extra 20, 30 uh, grams of protein. Again, fish, chicken, ground turkey, uh, tuna steak, all great options and gives you some variety. You know, you're going to be eating a lot of protein during this phase. So 
make sure uh, you have a few recipes stocked up so that you don't get sick of any single one you know, type of meat. All right, as for carbs, we're going to stick with complex carbs, and that's going to primarily come from oatmeal, brown rice, black beans, and sweet potatoes. You know, there are other ways to get, get carbs, but, you know, we want to stay away from the simple carbs, which is like processed foods, uh, sugary drinks, any of that stuff, you want to cut that out. It's not going to be the same as complex carbs, all right? So, and the third category for fats, you know, this is um, kind of up to you based on your own personal taste, but some great options are flaxseed oil, almonds, um, a lot of different types of nuts. Almonds are my personal favorite, so I included them in this list. Uh, olive oil and some peanut butter. So, you know, making uh, different combinations of all these types of foods should keep you hopefully from getting too bored with any specific type of meal. All right, and then when we switch into phase two for the cutting or the losing the fat, uh, you know, when you switch into phase two at this point, you've hopefully gone through a few months of bulking. You've noticed that your strength on your lifts is going up. Aesthetically, you're a bigger guy now. You know, you have that foundation of muscle underneath. It's just not showing up since you did gain some fat as well. So once you feel as though you have put on enough size and switch back to phase two or switch to phase two. And at this point, you're going to flip your diet over. So rather than eating above what was required every day to gain weight, you're going to eat below now. And this is kind of when a lot of people, you know, this is the harder aspect of dieting is eating below your maintenance requirements. All right. And as for the actual foods you're going to eat, you can eat the exact same type of foods, but you're going to restrict carbs at this point. All right, you're going to stick to high protein. And the reason we still stick with protein is that you work so hard to gain that muscle. So you do want to keep fueling your body with protein so that during workouts, you are retaining as much muscle mass as you are, as you can. So the low carbs is the hard part. You know, our Western diet is really geared towards carbohydrates. So at this point, the easiest kind of way to do this is just carb cycling. And I split it up on a work week basis. You know, you can do this depending on your own schedule. You can have your high carb and low carb days on different days or whenever you want, whichever is easiest for you. But essentially what it comes down to is you're going to have a long stretch of low carb days and then you'll have a refeed period over the weekend on this example. And during the low carb days, you're going to eat around 50 to 100 grams. You know, you can always go lower than 50. It's just really, really tough. And you know, a good place to start is 50 to 100 grams of carbs. And then on your high carb days, pretty much eat anything over 100 carbs, you know, eat whatever you want with, you know, obviously keep in mind that you're not going to go drink like two liters of soda. But is if you're sticking to high uh, complex carbs, on your high carbs days, you can have some sandwiches, you know, even toss a pizza on there if you're really craving it. And kind of get those cravings out of the way. So when you go back to your low carb days, you're, you know, really sticking to it and it doesn't, it keeps your motivation high and it kind of gets those cravings out of the way and lets you think about it for the long run. You know, carb cycling is a more sustainable way of doing a low carb diet than just staying low carb for two months at a time. It, uh, you know, for someone, if you, if you're working a lot, if you have a job that's physically demanding and, you know, taking all those factors into account, just having a few days where you can have higher carbs does, you know, keep you motivated for the long run. And that's kind of the goal here, right? You know, we want to think about our physique seven, eight months from now. We don't really care about the one week, two weeks, you know. So anything that's sustainable, think about the long term and just keep it consistent and you'll eventually get the type of physique that you want. All right, guys. Well, that's it for today's video. Again, if you did enjoy the video, really appreciate it. If you could give it a like or subscribe to my channel. Uh, gives me some great feedback on the type of videos you guys like. And again, if you have any questions, uh, always feel free to leave a comment below and I will try my best to respond. Again, uh, thank you guys again for watching. Really appreciate it. I'll catch you all later. Peace.